What's going on, everyone? I'm your boy, Michael Jombier, and I'm here tonight to host this amazing interview with the cast of Bonded, the first all-gay, non-binary horror film, all right? And it's directed by this guy right here, y'all, Mr. Anthony Bunn. What's going on, Anthony? Hey, how are you doing? I'm doing great. How you been? I'm good, man. I've just been, you know, hustling, building this platform. That's basically my biggest thing that I've been focusing on. Listen, y'all, it's called the never end the grind. Never give up, never stop, and keep going. And that's what Anthony is always about. So, out of all the different types of films you've made, because I've seen you make like some dramas, I've been seeing you make like some horror <laughs> stories. Now, all of a sudden, you get into the thriller horror film um, industry. What's going on with that? What's piqued your interest this time? Because I've never done it before. I've, I, I really wanted to, to, to do something different and, and to really stretch my my abilities of, of script writing because, you know, it's, horror is completely different from drama. Yeah. It's very. very different from drama. It's very different from comedy. So it's, it's, it's a few things that, you know, you got to, the elements that you got to put in there. So I, that was yeah. one thing that I really wanted to, to do. You know, because I was thinking about that too. Horror is kind of formulaic. Like, you know, it's certain things we expect to see in horror films and thrillers that we don't see. We're like, no, nah, I'm just I'm not going to watch this again. This could be a waste exactly. of time. You know, you got to have uh, an amazing cast. You got to have an interest. It's got to be believable and relatable. And you got to have people thinking, what would I do in this situation? Is this how I react? Is this as close to reality as possible? And if it's not, then we need to make it as campy as possible so we can at least laugh at the people that's dying. Right. Exactly. Exactly. Mm-hmm. So why the title Bonded, though? You know what? That was the, that was the one thing that I was trying to really figure out what to what to name the film. And actually, Brentley came up with the name of the film because he was just like, you know what? Because I told him I was about, you know, a psychological thing. That's with the killer in the past, the, the history of it. And he was like, oh, we should call it this. And I was like, you know what? That's right. I, I, I'll definitely. Uh, that's good. That's good. So I took that and I ran with it. You two work together so well on so many different projects. What's the secret to being married and also being partners on screen and off screen? Um, it's very it's communication because sometimes it's like, you know, you may have an idea that I might not necessarily like. I think we have to understand the position that we that we play because and if I'm working on something that's dealing with him that he's leading, I have to follow his his lead because it's his high it's his idea, his narrative, and this is how he wants to do it. And I think he's just learning now uh of my thing because I know in the past we would always clash, but it was mainly because of he always wanted to, for for me to be the best that I can be. Oh. In, in you know in the in the project whatever project so I had to understand that and to not take things personal when it mm-hmm. came to you know us talking about stuff. See, I remember he said he had to learn how to not take things personal. You know how you do that? Yeah. What we call that growth. Yeah, you big girl draws, you draws. Yeah, we draw, we blow. So I love exactly. that. So I'm really excited to talk with the cast about this because this right here was something that had me. I was looking at it like, ooh, ooh. Oh, I was like, wait a minute. How, is that really happening? Like, okay. Um, I might not be going on cabin trips no time soon, but you know, <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was dope. <laughs> yeah, you know, they always say about black people in cabins and woods and all that stuff. I'm gonna just give myself a good black boy pat on that, okay, y'all? All right, y'all, right. Please, y'all, because we're about to zoom in and talk with the cast of Bundy. Stay tuned, all right? I'm your boy, Michael Jonvier. More to come. Hey, everybody. How you doing tonight? I am your boy, Michael jean and I am here to interview the cast of Bonded, this amazing new film that is, I want to say, all gay, but it's mostly gay and non-binary. And let me tell y'all something. It is lit. L-I-T. So we got this really hot cast right here, these amazing actors and actors that I want y'all to know about. And we're going to get into it. So let's go around the room, as I like to call it, okay? We're going to start with you, Mr. Duell Andrews. Raise your hand and say hello to the people. Hey, y'all, it's me, Duel Andrews, and I play the role of Julian. All right. And then we got Mr. Jarek White. What's up, everybody? I'm Jarek White, and I play the role of Jackson. All right. Then we have the lovely Miss Leilani Smith. How you doing? Good. I'm so good and glad to be here. I play Linda. All right. We have Mr. BJ Minor. 
What's up, world? My name is BJ Minor, and I play Breathe. All right, and then we got Mr. Brent Sturgis. How you doing today, Brent? I'm good, I'm good. Hey, guys, I'm Brent Sturgis here, and I play Owen. And then right up in the corner, y'all, we have our director, Mr. Anthony Bunn. How you doing, Anthony? Good, I'm good. How are you? Great, great, great. Let me tell you, y'all are beautiful people. I'm looking like, oh, okay. <laughs> you know, I'm like, I'm a little blushing, you know what I'm saying? Slightly intimidated, but it's going to be okay, though. So, Brent, yeah. I want to start with you, though, because, you know, you, um, Mr. District Attorney, husband, badass, you know what I mean? Like, how did you get into character to play this character? Because he had, like, a lot of different moments. Some, he was soft and dramatic. Others, he was like, we're going to take charge. I'm going to do this. What was your What was your process of getting into the moment? I got you. Well, the, the character of Owen is kind of like almost how I am naturally in life. You know, I, I very chill in life, very calm. I like to execute, get things done. But when it's time to go for me, it's time to go, which can turn into the action. You know what I say for Owen when he when he has to do business it's like, OK, okay no time for games. Let's go. Let's do this business. Let's find out what's going on so then we can find the solution. So I just kind of channeled like me as I go through life. Like, what do I do when it's very serious, when it's business? And what do I do when it's time to have a good time? Even though you might catch Owen, you know, not having as much as a good time as some of the other guys, but he always wants to be cool and a part of, of it all still. <laughs> being Owen or being yourself, could you have ever imagined yourself in a situation like this? What do you think you might have done? Would you have packed up and left or would you have been like, you know, <laughs> I'm going to be the hero of this story? Yeah, I think I still would have took it on. You mm. know, I still would have took it on. Owen, you know, I, I guess the crew sees him kind of as like the leader, kind of that that friend who's like, all right, we're going to go through the forest. You know, let's make sure Owen's there. And, you know, if he's still here, we'll, <laughs> we'll be around and still get it done because he hasn't ran away yet. Well, you know? <laughs> one of the things I really liked about your character is his dynamic with his husband. Like, they clearly go on through some problems. Um, they want to work it out. I like to see the willingness to work it out. Um, when you have like a disagreement with your particular partner or other, like how do y'all solve your issues? Now, for me in in this film, the issues were were more of, you know, Reef. He just really wants to understand why and how, and you know, looks for Owen to to find the solution to fix it. But Owen doesn't always have the answer, so yeah. Owen has to make sure he's just calm and collected to go. Okay. Check this out. Remember this? Remember what this friend said to you? Let's keep it calm. Let's keep it moving. And eventually, yes, I'm going to do my best to find out, you know, how we're going to go about this and how we're going to figure it out. You know, to just really console him and give him the confidence to chill out. We're going to get it done, you know? Yeah. Um, his character tended to kind of find solace outside the relationship. Have you um, ever been in a situation where you cheated or find yourself, like, you know, looking outside your relationship for comfort? Yeah, it's happened. You know, it's life. It's, it's happened. <laughs> <laughs> it's happy. Like it's, no, I completely, I mean, I understand that. Like, so, I mean, do you feel like he was justified in finding solace outside the relationship based on some of the factors that were going on? I don't want to give too much, y'all. That's why I'm like asking the questions around the question. Yeah. No, you know, you know, as, as they say, you know, you, you got to do what you got to do for your lover because there's someone out there who will do it so swell that you know that that lover might not come back so i i understand i understand okay okay Brent, what do you want everybody to take away from your character when they watch this what film? i took what i took away from from on was um at all cost get it done hmm. Fig, figure it out at all cost you know on was just kind of like a rock he was. Like, we're, we're just gonna we're just gonna figure it out and i take that with me along with all my endeavors like it might get crazy it might get wild and it will get wild it's not always going to be easy but take the time and get it done at all costs that's how what i took from it. i love it i love it because for me i say oh it's blood involved let's let the police do their job so kudos <laughs> to you all right brent we know you gotta go so we're gonna let you get back yes. to it thank you for doing such a wonderful job on this film and we're looking forward yes. to seeing more from you Dance your heart out. Yes, guys. I go in a play. You're doing big things. <laughs> Thank you. Right. See ya. All right. Bye, Brad. Bye, Brad. See you guys. Bye. Bye. Bye.
Oh, that was wonderful talking with him. All right, so let me talk to y'all lovely people right here. Because let me tell y'all something. This film right here, besides people getting killed, um, the cabin trip was lit. <laughs> <laughs> it, was, it was lit. Wow. So, uh, boy trips. Let's talk about community or whatnot. Because one thing I do like is that the guys did have a sense of community. They had a friendship. And even though they were having their issues or whatnot, they were still able to go to their friends and kind of say, okay, we got to take some time to get away. How important is community when it comes to like, you know, living your life, recovering, um, tackling difficult issues? Talk to me about community and what that means for each of you. Anybody? I'm going to call names. BJ, what's up? Okay, cool. Um, well, first I want to say I, I'm glad you could like recognize the community within the film. I think that totally goes to the cast. Uh, this cast, there were zero egos on set. It lovely. made it beyond lovely to work with every single individual. Um, and we all have like different backgrounds and um, we all have a uh, different history when it comes to film and television. Uh, yet it didn't matter. Like there was like no pecking order. Everyone saw each other as equals. Everyone saw each other as co-stars and you learned and gained something from every single person on set. So I think that made all of our scenes, especially all of our group scenes, like you said, lit. We genuinely enjoyed being around each other. You can't fake that. It's right. a natural chemistry. Like it was off the charts. I, I I bet every single person, even though they were like 12 hour days, enjoyed being there all 12 hours because you just, we genuinely enjoyed every single person there from cast, crew, director. Um, so following up with community, that's also just how the real world functions. Uh, Anthony knew most of us, uh, that showed community. We got a, a job out of this because of our relationship with Anthony. So relationships are everything in this world. Um, like you said, it's getting over the humps, it's celebrating the big wins, it's literally everything. I love that, I love that. Um, being that this is a horror genre, was there any particular scene that made you guys be like, oh, you know what I'm saying? Like when you watched it, like it kind of made you took took a back? I have to say yeah. <laughs> that when I came downstairs and it shows in the trailer, so I don't mind talking about it, but seeing BJ's mouth stitched up <laughs> and having to come in um, with the scissors to do something, whether it was to help or hurt, uh, that really took me aback to just, I mean, my hands were shaking in that scene and it was real. <laughs> I was like, no. <laughs> <laughs> my phone rang and I literally turned my head like this for a second. Then I looked and I saw it in his mouth. I was like, oh crap. Like I squeezed my water bottle. I was like, oh my God. Like <laughs> that was really, really good. So that's really interesting. One thing I really like that y'all did is y'all put like a reality TV show factor to it. So this one, Duel's character comes in, Julia. And I was just kind of like, this is very, very annoying. Like when he immediately runs over to the camera when something is going wrong, like I kind of feel like that's a parody of what goes on in the world today. And when we see something serious happening, instead of us calling the police or calling the paramedics, we kind of like, I'm going to put this on Instagram. You know, we kind of yeah. like, yeah. Talk to me about your character, Julia. How do you feel about him? Oh, um, I remember I got the call from um, Anthony about this part. And at first, you know, I had auditioned for another role, but he had reached out to me and he was like, yeah, I see you for this part. And we just kind of had this conversation about Julian and what Julian was about. And I, it felt like to me, it was a challenge because for me, I don't necessarily get to play characters who are that extroverted. But like you said, uh, Julian is an influencer wannabe reality star so he's going to take any opportunity to post the drama be a part of the drama he, he can care less even whether it's his friends or his relationship you know all all bets are off he's he's there he wants it to be documented and for me playing julian i had to force myself to get out of my comfort zone and be a little bit more extroverted than i usually am and just have fun because he's a fun character he's 
He's bougetto. He's very bougie, but has ghetto tendencies. We see that very raging, raging hunter. I did my research. I was like, I kind of want him to be like a version of like a gay male version of raging hunter. So I tried to go into that vibe. And of course, Anthony was very, very supportive. We had several conversations so that, you know, he was like, if you're going to go there, go there. I'll pr bring you back. And that was really, really comforting because as actors, we always feel limited. Like how can, you know, we want to go there, but we don't want to be over the top or non-believable. So Anthony was like, trust me, you know, I got you. And he's always been like that. Go there and then we'll bring you back. And we just kind of found like a happy medium. And his relationships with the, with the rest of the with rest of the group, like he's talked about community, you know, sometimes, especially for uh, black queer men or black binary men, we don't always have that sense of support at home. So our friends become like our chosen family, our community. And that's what I loved about reading the script was they were like their own chosen family, regardless of whatever was going on in their lives. They can they can rely on each other. So. Yeah, Julian was just so fun to play and, you know, just had to tap into my, you know, you know what I, you know, what is it called? You know what I, I you know what I did last summer type of vibe, you know, yes. screen, screen King kind of vibe. So that was really fun. <laughs> okay, that's great. That's really great. Yeah, let me, let's talk to Mr. Jackson real quick, because Jackson was giving me kind of the strong, silent type. Like he was kind of like, you know, it's going to be okay. Do you think that's okay to do? Like we got to have the friend that balances kind of the group out. How similar or dissimilar are you to Jackson? Are you that calm, cool, and collected? I would uh, honestly have to say I'm like, I think Jackson was me. Like, mm -hmm. Jackson was me, I was Jackson. And I think, like, it fit perfectly, um, especially with, like, being the calm, cool, collective one. Especially for uh, Reeve. Like, I felt like I was, like, almost Reeve's voice of reasoning at mm -hmm. times, you know, especially with that one scene that we have in the kitchen together. And, mm -hmm. you know, there were times that you could tell I hated Julian shit. Like I hated the, you know, the whole uh, <laughs> reality TV thing that he had going on. But at the same time, I'm like trying to like level Reeve out and just like make sure everyone's like having a good time. Like there's a scene where I mentioned like, I don't want any drama. I want everything to go well. And I would say like, that is probably how I am in person too. Like just with my, my group of friends. I have a group of friends here in Phoenix that I love, but like, you know how, you know how gays can get and the drama can get like, built up and it's just like okay look i'm trying to have a good time i'm not trying to like you know deal with anyone's bullshit and i feel like i was able to relay that with jackson uh throughout the throughout the filming of the movie i do yeah i, I definitely can understand that because like um i always tell people even if you have a group of friends some everybody can't be the hype bait somebody's mm -hmm. gotta be the somebody's got to kind of be the anchor to make sure like Fortunately, unfortunately, everybody's okay. And everybody kind of looks at that person like, oh, he's a wet blanket. Oh, he's not fun. Well, no, he's <laughs> y'all together. He's essentially kind of like the glue a little bit. Like, mm -hmm. over here, come back over here. Let's all get together. So I always appreciate people and characters like that. So that was really, really dope. BJ, let me ask you this question. So with seeing all the problems that your character and his husband were having, how would you react to a six month relationship that's like sexless? Um, you know, I think, and I don't even think that's like a, I, I, I think it's more normal than we expect. Every relationship is different, honestly, and every person is different. Uh, the sexuality spectrum and the level of what people needed, it, it's, it varies from person to person. So every relationship is different. And Reeve and um, Brett's character, and why am I blanking on my husband's name? What was his name? Yeah, I'm blanking on hubby. Well, that's- Owen. Oh, Owen. Owen. That shows you why our relationship was a mess. I couldn't remember his name. Um, <laughs> divorce. <laughs> divorce, divorce me, oh. okay? I'm a baby doctor. I'll make it up somewhere else. <laughs> <laughs> Um, no, but yeah, I think that's probably why even Owen and Reeve were having issues. Some people require sex multiple times a week or multiple times a day. Reeve was not that person. Reeve was a very tired doctor. Um, but, you know, if that's the love of your life, you're going to find avenues and ways to, to fix it. And um, I think in the movie, you're going to see like really uh, very like vulnerable moments of us getting there, but also very comedic moments. Like Jared yeah. said, like, there's going to be a time where Reeve is going to be really drunk trying to figure out how do I make my man happy? Um, 
Mm-hmm. So, you know, that's, that's, but that's life. Um, and I'm really glad that that's actually in the film because I think it's more relatable than we expect, especially when it comes to queer culture. Yeah. Queer culture is something that's very over sexualized, I think. Um, so you expect, and I mean, you're going to get sexy in this film, you will. But in a lot of cases, it's, it's over sexualized. Our, our palettes for sex is over saturated. So I think it's actually a breath of fresh air to see a, a couple that's struggling because of the lack of sex. Like, what are we, what are, what do we have to offer if you remove sex? And I think that's a very important thing to think about. Got you. That's no, I definitely agree with that. Which is, but, but it kind of also juxtaposes the position of like a, a certain scene that we see inside of there where everybody's together. And so that kind of confused me. I was wondering, was everybody doing something different in a separate room? Or was it everybody in the same bed? So, director, can you answer that? <laughs> I, don't, just right. so, I don't know how much he wants to get on. Like, no. So... <laughs> So here, so the thing is, is that like I, it's it's very like like BJ said, in the culture of the queer community, it's like it, everything is is overly sexualized. So mm-hmm. I was just like in in terms of I had to 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 balance the scales in a sense because yes, we see this relate this couple going through this relationship where they have this long ass dry spell of not, you know, having sex. But then, you know, when they get on when they get around friends and they get around the libations and the good spirits and everything is at its height, that it, it, it at that point it doesn't matter who's around and so to speak, everybody's lively to get it. You know what I'm saying? But but in a sense is though, like it's more so like in, in a group of people that they are very familiar with each other. Cause that's, that's the thing that um, I want it to be clear as well, because yes, you'll see a moment where everybody's in, the, you know, doing their thing together, but that shows the level of respect that each one of them have for one another because they've known each other for a very long time. And it, and this is a, a routine thing that happens every French trip that they look forward to to doing because they like having a good time with one another. OK, because um, I didn't feel a lot of respect with Julian um, to be <laughs> in his situation because that was dog dirty. Let's, I'm just, just, let's just keep it fast. <laughs> I, was I, I agree with you. I, agree I was mad. <laughs> I said, he got the guy that had it on camera. Too. He got me to bring a camera beside here. Mm-hmm. No. I'm going to give you Zeus Network. That's what you're going to get. You're not going to get a housewife. You're going to get Zeus Network. I'm going to be I'm okay with that. Julian's okay with that. You know. <laughs> <laughs> what a oh mad. I, I was <laughs> screaming. I was like, oh, I, like, I knew something was going on. I knew it. But, but obviously, I mean, but obviously, you know, with every, you know, it's it's that it's that common thread. It's 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 like you know, I would not be playing. I would not be realistic if I didn't add some element of messiness in there. Mm-hmm. Yes, despite I know some people say, well, that's well, why everything we know when it comes to gay people got to be messy. No, it, it not, it's not necessarily that it has to be messy, but there's always a situation. Now, it depends on how you handle that situation, which makes it messy or not. So, you know what I'm saying? So, the, again, it goes back to the simple fact of the matter is that they all know each other for a very long time. They, you know, they it's a moment that happened and obviously each party are aware of the situation so yeah. it's like you know what i'm saying it's like do they how do they handle it and you and as you can see they handle it with grace i mean even though it's it's a Wait, situation who handles it with grace <laughs> i'll handle it with grace you have it with grace because oh <laughs> but uh julian i don't know Mm. If there's a bonded two, we gotta settle this. It's gotta be settled. I'm down. I'm down. I'm, I'm, I'm that girl. We could. <laughs> I'm ready to get a bonded two. But I'll be like, sharpening the claws. But you know what? Like, as funny as all that was, as much as I was entangled, the thing that really hurt me is like, you know, when Leilani got, with Leilani's character, you know, um, because you want you when you see stories about serial killers and stuff like that, you always wonder how were they raised. Who is their mother? Because no matter what anybody says, at the end of the day, when somebody acts out, any child acts out, nobody asks, 
Um, where nobody says, Where's that dad? Where's that uncle? Where's that grandma? Where's that grandfather? It's always, Where's your mother? Your mother let you walk out the house like that. Your mother know you act like this. Your mother know you're doing that. And so when you get to some a character that's been or a person that's been so dark, you kind of wonder, like, well, what does she do or not do? Like, how did you get the character to play the mother of a killer? Uh, it was absolutely um, a, a place that me and Anthony ended up getting a chance to speak about because I was just like, where is she coming from? Like, does she love him? Does she know him? Is she, is she, does she, is she a part of his life? And, you know, as we spoke about it, we ended up talking about, you know, sometimes the tragedy and the distance that happens, it doesn't mean that love isn't there because she definitely loves her son and yeah. she wants the best. And um, I equated it to my life with my brother who uh, we are raised in the same household, <laughs> same mom and dad, same loving folks. And my brother went far left like i mean meth and crack and all that and yeah, i don't it. touch the stuff i don't you know I, i'm very disciplined when i drink i'm disciplined in in all in all aspects of my life whereas you know he just went the other way and so i still love him yeah. I can't He's my brother. He's my blood. So, I mean, if he ever changes, I will be here with open arms, ready to help and, and ready to accept him. And that's the way I felt about my son. You know, it, it doesn't matter what you think. I know that there's better pieces of him somewhere. And that's what I think a mom will always try to draw out. Um, and, you know, she did find out about it and she did try to curve it <laughs> to the left. She didn't just like, okay, well, you know, he's going to do what he's going to do. <laughs> I think she, she became a little bit involved of wanting to figure it out, but yeah. just didn't have the time. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That, that's, that's a rough situation. Um, because I always tell people monsters aren't born. They're created, you know, some situation happens that twist this person and push them to a path of where it's like low redemption or no redemption. And you kind of just have to think about that moment, which is why, you know, you tell people all the time, be careful what you do to other people because you don't know how they're going to react. To us, it can be something as simple as, oh, you got to let some things roll off your shoulder or you give them this person power over you. But to them, it's everything. You decimated them and they are going to get you back however, whenever, or whatever they got to do. So, you know, let's just all be cognizant of how we treat people and talk to people because, um, God, it's been a block sometimes. It's on a monster your direction. Yes, I mean, mental health is so real. And what yeah. something that something that can make someone snap and change in the immediacy and in the story bonded. I mean, it's basically the loss of a family that to him, he he was connected in the womb. And a lot of twins end up having this kind of connection that none of us can no, understand or queen. explain. Yeah, unless <laughs> so. you're a twin, you don't get it. That's wow. That's really deep. And thank you for sharing it and being so vulnerable. That's very, very, very deep. Um, I think September was actually Mental Health Awareness Month. And I'm myself by day. I'm a social worker. So I deal with populations and stuff like that. So you guys, if you need help, like, please make sure you get the help that you need. It's a wealth of stuff out there and free health care for you, too. So just a little tidbit. The more you know. Right. A little rainbow. <laughs> But y'all, I really, really did enjoy this film. Um, I really enjoyed watching all of you. And I want to tell y'all, thank y'all so much for being a part of this and bringing some diversity to the landscape of, you know, the horror genre. Because a lot of times when we see gay characters, um, they just wiped out. <laughs> like, wiped out. I mean, even though some were killed, you know, some people do survive and they're going to say who did or what not. But um, that's important. You know, the, the Black character gets killed off. The gay character gets killed off. And I'm just kind of like, well... What else? So thank y'all for doing this. I feel like this was very important and it expands like what you see when you see queer people on TV or um, movies. And that's that's really, really important. A lot of times people say, you know, um, I'm not going to create that type of film because nobody's going to watch it because black people are in it or because it's a woman film or because it's a gay film. When in actuality, there are audiences that are craving it and they'll do that. Once upon a time, they said a black superhero film ain't going to blow up in the box office. Black Panther is one of the highest rated movies of all time, right? Before that, you wouldn't see gay people on TV. Every show got a gay or trans character on this point. Before that, you didn't see black people on TV. 
so many shows are black now, you know? So let's just not say what people don't want to see and make inclusivity the big eye in all situations. I think that's so important. I want everybody to give me a quote for everybody, for people to live by or something you want to say to aspiring actors who want to do what you're currently doing. I'm sorry, but you do well. Huh. Follow your instincts. I would say that sometimes we have a tendency to get in our own heads about what we want to do as opposed to just going out there and just doing it. I remember Beyonce had mentioned that in one of her motivational videos and it really touched me. But even before that, it's just about following your instinct and going for what you what you know. Like if some of us didn't audition or or we wouldn't be in the place that we are right now, being in a historic, groundbreaking horror film. So follow your instinct. It'll never lead you wrong. All right, Jackson. I'm not you, Jackson. I'm sorry, Jerry. <laughs> Very good. Um, I would probably say, like, you know, um, there's a Rihanna song called Farewell. And mm. um, in that in that song, it talks about, like, letting somebody go in order for them to be able to, like, to chase their dreams. And so I would have to say, like, you know, don't be afraid to say farewell. You know, it, it's not goodbye forever, but it's like, I gotta go and I gotta, I gotta, you know, do something that's right for me. And I gotta go make the changes for myself that I wanna make. And I wanna, you know, succeed. And with those changes that I gotta go make, if that means leaving you behind for a little bit. Mm, love that. Leilani. Um, I would definitely say don't allow anyone to dull your light. Your light is needed. Your light is wanted. Your light is accepted by so many. So as many times as people want to push back, those are definitely the minority. And you are here to do something, to be something, to be you. And if all it ends up to be is you being you at the end of the day, all of you, that is the love and light this world needs for change. Oh, beautiful. I love that. BJ. Well, one, I want to say ditto to what everyone said, but especially you, Leilani. Yes, do not let someone dim your light. That's that's everything. Um, I guess my advice, uh, and it's something I'm also putting in on myself, is to pick my head up from my phone and build genuine connections and relationships with the people around me. To not be so addicted to my technology, but to actually make real connections with people. Because I think... And this isn't for like the the entrepreneur of the world. This is for like everyone else. <laughs> uh, your greatest tool is going to be your community. Um, a lot of us don't know how to access the path we need in order to reach the greatness that we need to. But other people might know how to do that. So keep building genuine connections and you'll be surprised where that can take you. I love that. I love that. Very important. Mr. Bond. Wow. Yeah. Man, um, the one thing that I would say is uh, the very last thing uh, my stepfather who passed away in 9-11 told me uh, is if you're going to do it, see it through. Don't give up. It's going to be difficult, but always persevere no matter what the challenges are. And I think that has, that one motto has driven me for all of this time where everyone has told me that I won't be able to do this. I won't be able to achieve this. Um, you're crazy because you're doing this. And how are you going to get this done? And I, because of that, I have persevered. Every project that I have done I have completed. And that's a rarity for somebody in my position because a lot of people don't complete projects. They start them, but don't complete them. And I have, and I, it has been a blessing that I have completed every project that I have started. I got to clap you for that. <laughs> that is a feat. That's definitely a feat. But my quote for today will be, preserve your heart even when people try to quantify your character. You only get one, so you get to decide exactly what it looks like and how it beats. Just make sure it's beating to your own drum, okay? I'm your boy, Michael jean -Bierre. It's been a pleasure talking with you guys, the cast of Bonded. Please make sure you follow me everywhere at Michael jean -Bierre. It's M-I-C-H-A-E-L-J-O-N-B-I-E-R. 
And Mr. Bond, will you please tell everybody when Bonded will be coming out? It will be coming out to limited theaters in on October 27th. However, if you log on to www.watchvim.com, you will be able to get your own personalized seat at your computer or on your phone for $11.99. And you can watch the film from our website. And please, guys, it is so important that we support this film. Not only that you're supporting um, a Black-owned business, but you're also supporting all of the beautiful, wonderful actors and actresses that you see in this film. Because this is going to be something that will help them live off of this film for its, its longevity. So please, please, please support the film. All right. Well, everybody, y'all have a wonderful night. I'll be talking to everybody soon. Have a great week. Thank you. Thank you very much, Michael. Bye, guys. Thank you.